Hello everyone, today we are with the Water Cobras and I just wanted to talk about a little innovation um, that might be helpful to out of reptile keepers. Um, tropical species of snakes need decent humidity to be able to live properly and especially during their shedding cycle um, they need extra humidity to be able to shed their skin. You don't see this problem with desert snakes, they will shed properly in the uh, lowest humidity conditions because that's where they have evolved to live in um, But with tropical snakes You have these issues and I see a lot of videos with people, you know, having to peel sheds, etc. And I have gone through that myself as well uh, The area that I live in is not particularly humid Even though we get a lot of rain uh, We don't have a sea or a lake nearby So we got dry weather Humidity in my snake room is around, you know, 30%, 35% ish. So tropical species that I have, um, I use these plastic boxes. Now, what do I have in this plastic box? Let's see. As you can see, the snake was sitting inside comfortably. It's basically good old moss that most reptile keepers use but when you get this moss uh, damp and put it in an enclosed space it creates a microclimate that is very good in keeping the humidity levels the way you want to keep them and with this snakes can regulate their own humidity needs they come out when they want to come out they stay in the humid area when they want to stay in the humid area and they shed perfectly now this solution has its drawback, you got to be very careful with um, basically fungi and spores and all that stuff. You need to be careful that your moss is um, clean, there's no snake feces in it and you need to uh, keep changing it you know, on a regular basis so it doesn't get contaminated. Uh, because obviously uh, wet environments with little air circulation promotes bacterial and fungi growth so we all got to be careful about that but um, it creates this microclimate and it's very useful so what I do is I dampen it really well uh, the moss when the snake is in the shedding cycle then I let it dry slowly because it's in a box it dries very slowly but you don't need to wet it like regularly otherwise uh, it will be way too damp and it may be actually uh, detrimental to the snake's health but it's a great help with water loving species like this beautiful water cobra. Now let's see if this girl wants to eat. As you guys know, uh, my um, subscribers will know that I got these snakes to feed on mice already. So they already like the taste of mice. Well, my male stopped eating for some reason, so I'm kind of assist feeding him, but my female loves mice. Here we go. There we are. Beautiful girl. For the people who are new to my channel, this is a Congo water cobra. Um, they are deeply embedded in the Naja or Naha or Naya genus, uh, but they are also considered under the Bullingerina subgenus. An African cobra species, narrow food, very close relative of the forest cobra, uh, genetically speaking, even though forest cobra doesn't live and hunt in lakes. Um, these guys live by a lake in Congo. Every morning with the sun they go into the lake and hunt for fish, so their venom is extremely toxic, maybe drop by drop the most toxic cobra venom out there um, 
but these captive bred individuals are incredibly tame. I mean, I can hold the snake up with my bare hands, not that it's advisable to do so, and I can play with it like a corn snake. You know, she wouldn't think of biting me. So it's amazing to have these captive bred cobras that are docile. Again, this is not advised because these are highly venomous snakes and a bite can easily be lethal and there is basically no antivenin available. The general African Samir antivenin apparently works to a degree, so that's good, but there's no specific antivenin available, so you gotta be careful around them. But again, I would you would see the shock on my face if the snake bit me somehow. I probably need to go near her head with intense smell of mice in my hands. Maybe she will bite me then. Um, the male is even more docile. And again, the main purpose of this video is not to show her feet because I have done that several times. But to show this style of enclosure, I used to use these with leopard geckos when I was keeping them because leopard geckos also suffer from um, lack of humidity and in fact they will lose digits in their uh, hands and because basically the stuck shed would um, cut circulation and with venomous snakes you really do want a proper shed because basically um, you can easily peel off a corn snake's shed but you need to be very careful when you're peeling off a venomous snake's shed because the consequences of getting bitten are significantly more difficult to deal with so it's good to have proper humidity inside the cage of course, again, as I said, you need to be very careful with humidity because you can easily create an environment that promotes bacterial and fungal growth. But at the end, it's a good solution. Now I have this set up for basically all my cobras. The Samar cobras have obviously larger boxes and the monocult cobras also have larger boxes. And, you know, they tend to stay inside the box, but they will also go out when they're hungry and cruise their cage. The problem with this is you see your snakes a lot more, a lot less, uh, because they like the humid, dark environment of the humid hide box. But in the end, they do have perfect sheds, and you don't have to worry about peeling of the eye caps off of your snake. Right, as we can see, this girl is now progressing with the mouse. For people who are entirely new to snakes, uh, maybe it's good to say that snakes shed their skin to grow, basically. Um, it's not just snakes, almost all animals somehow shed the outer layer of their skin. Um, we do as well. We just do it in tiny partial amounts and we don't go out of our skin in its entirety. It would be an interesting thing to see. By the way, this girl is not handling that mouse very well. She's going to the wrong place, but anyway. Um, but snakes do shed their skin in a single piece. At, at least they are supposed to let's say, um, but low humidity stops them doing this and if they have stuck shed it cuts circulation to their body and especially this is especially important in the eyes because you know having eye caps stuck to your snake's eyes can cause blindness and also in the tail area where the circulation is already low and 
uh, pressure will make you lose make your snake lose its tail so proper humidity is important now it's it's very interesting to see that my snakes do not defecate in these boxes I thought that would be a major problem when I started doing this but they see them these places as basically their um, homes and they go out of the tiny hole and defecate outside I guess no one wants the smell of shit in their house and then they come back in so it's makes things easier uh, cleaning wise because if they did defecate I mean in most cases that I would need to uh, change the moss and disinfect the box and that would get costly after a while this sporangium moss is not the cheapest thing in the world even though I buy cheap in high quantities um, in the country that I live in nothing is exactly cheap um, but my snakes all my corbas all six of them they leave their boxes they defecate outside and then they come back in all right um, water cobras are naturally fish feeders as I said and this lady will take its time to feed I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit more to see if I can stay focused to those wonderful head scales I mean this is really beautiful work of art these cobras they have that natural rainbow colored sheen on their scales and then LA pits themselves with those big head scales on top are just beautiful beautiful animals and I absolutely loved them to bits and they did cost a pretty penny I can tell you these captive red water cobras because there is only single breeder in entire Europe that breeds this particular species and I didn't want to you know promote more wild caught animals because I would say maybe 90% of these water cobras um, they die in shipment they come in terrible shape uh, Congo really is not the best place to order animals from unfortunately animals are mistreated significantly and the ones that make it over to their final destination are you usually in terrible terrible shape and knowing this you know constantly ordering from these places I really don't understand the motivation behind it you know I don't want to kill 20 snakes in the wild to be able to get one pair that I can keep that's just selfish so getting them captive bred was amazing and obviously captive bred works great because of the docileness of these animals I have seen the same species wild caught and they were quite aggressive and not like these snakes all right as you can see she's doing her job it's a slow process but she's doing it and I'm glad she's eating well I'm hoping to breed these guys when the time comes they're about two years old now um, I guess I would need at least another year for sexual maturity so I'll wait for that but until then um, it's beautiful uh, to have these animals in my snake room and I would keep sharing them with you guys we will just let this girl uh, finish her meal they take their time but I think we have enough footage for today um, just to say if you're not a subscriber please subscribe and please click those ads that pop up on your screen you know it will take one click but it will help the cows so I can keep making these videos for you guys um, you know it's good to make a little money out of it it's you know maybe 
can compensate for 1% of the spend that I have keeping these animals. So <laughs> it's good to have a little help. Uh, well, anyway, I love this hobby and I love it. Uh, I love sharing it with you guys. Hope you enjoy the videos and I will see you next week. Take care. Bye.